Carrick, you were 17 when you thought about a military career. What made you decide to join? Well, my dad was probably my biggest influence because he was in the National Guard at the time. And, and uh, you know, <laughs> it's hard for me to remember what happened yesterday, yet alone uh, when I was 17. But um, I don't know if I really just openly chose to do it or if he just kind of said, hey, let's go, you're going to sign up. But uh, but obviously it required my parents' signature, so, so uh, I headed over to the armory with my father and we visited a recruiter. Um, you know, but I have uh, two grandfathers that, that had both served in World War II, and of course uh, my dad had, uh, he's now retired, but uh, served a, a lot of years um, in the National Guard, and so as a kid, I, I always saw him, you know, one week in a month putting his uniform on and going to his summer camps and stuff. So, um, you know, I, I I knew, you know, what he did, and, and I thought it was cool, you know, seeing my dad in his in his army uniform, um, and and so you know, I probably had that influence as as I was growing up, and it and it came time for me to to make a decision on whether I wanted to enlist or not. And then about a year later, you became. ARG, is that right? Uh, well, no, I... A, AGR. AGR, but uh, that was... Uh, I did... I believe that was uh, in January of 2005 is when I became uh, AGR. And it was just... It's it's a full-time job is really what it is. Uh, uh, putting the uniform on, on every day, reporting to the armory, and, and uh, you know, uh, the, the, the daily... Uh, Monday through Friday work that, that has to be done, uh, you know, preparing for the training or, or, or uh, administrative issues that, that need to be taken care of with the soldiers or, or um, the supply issues. So, so really there, there's a, with all National Guard units, there's, there's a full-time uh, unit support staff um, of, of full-timers that, that really do that day-to-day that -day business throughout the week. and. and really help plan and, and prepare for when we have our, our drill weekends one week in a month or, or the uh, our, our annual training which you know is generally a two-week period during the year um, and, and there's a, a lot of planning and preparation and work that, that goes behind uh, you know all of that coming coming to fruition so so that's essentially what I'm, I'm a part of and I start I, I, I got that job uh, like I said uh, January of 2005. What was basic training like, or what was the training like for you? Well, you know, I was 17 years old and, and, and wet behind the ears and, and didn't really know what I was going to get into. My dad, you know, had, had kind of told me a little bit, but uh, um, I didn't like it. <laughs> it was the first time I'd really been away from home for very uh, a very long period of time. Um, you know, I was kind of scared. Uh, the drill sergeants, I just knew that they were just going to, to, you know, break me in half, um, you know, and, and uh, I, I try to do everything they told me exactly how they told me, and, uh, you know, I was uh, extremely happy when, when the day I graduated from basic training and got to come back home, uh, no doubt. Was there ever a point when you thought, I may not make this? What kept you going? What kept you... I, you know, I don't know if there's ever a point. I, I, I don't think you... you get that mentality you don't have that option it, it's hey you're going to you know whether it's it's your own personal feelings or it's the drill sergeants or, or whatever uh, drives you but you, you don't think I may not make this because that's not an option it's it's how do I how do I get through this how do I make it because you have to do it but uh, um, yeah when was your first time going overseas what was that like uh, Actually, I believe it was in 1992, uh, and it was just for a, a, a two-week annual training. Um, I went to uh, Panama. It was the first time I'd, I'd went overseas with the military or, or ever at that time. And uh, it, was, it was a really, really neat experience. Um, just We were down there doing uh, uh, road projects and construction projects uh, in, in some pretty remote areas of the country and, and people that, that, you know, drink water and, and wash their clothes and, and uh, you know um, use the same stream for for all their sources of water so um, you know the, the standard of living there was uh, <clears throat> something I'd never seen before no electricity in the houses and stuff and um, really an eye-opening experience it was just something that 
that you maybe had heard about, but to actually go see how other people live somewhere in other, in, in other parts of the world, and especially when you get to, to some type of a, a third world type uh, country. Um, I, I don't know how many pictures I probably burned up, but uh, it was just something that uh, was uh, just very interesting to me. Now, you also spent uh, some time in Iraq, both Iraq and Afghanistan. When did you go to Iraq? Uh, I went to Iraq in uh, 2005. Um, we went to training. We spent uh, about a month and a half at Fort Riley and then uh, Kansas, and then we went down to a National uh, Training Center in, in uh, Texas and spent about another month, month and a half down there, and then, and then shipped over. Um, so I believe it was uh, late October, early November when we actually arrived uh, in Iraq. Um, was there for, for exactly one year, uh, boots on ground, and then returned back home from there. Um, what it was like, um, you know, I had, at that point in time I had been... Uh, I'd been to several different places. I'd been to uh, Nicaragua and, and, and uh, some, some other countries. So uh, I wasn't as, as much in awe uh, because it wasn't the first time I'd seen a, a third world uh, um, country and, and, and you know, some of the, the, the environment um, hot. I can remember as, <laughs> that as plain as day. I watched a thermometer reach 140 degrees and that's just because it stopped and it couldn't go any further. Um, very desolate, but uh, just um, uh, not not what I had had really en envisioned or thought. Uh, you know, it was going to be, but uh, um, unique unique uh, experience. The the people, um, you know, w were somewhat nomadic, and there were some that lived in in just the the, the wooden or mud huts and things of that nature, but similar housing to what I'd seen like in, in some of the, the Central America places that I'd been to. Now you left Iraq, came home, and were deployed again to Afghanistan, right? Correct, yeah. What was that like? Um, you know, uh, when, I, when I headed to Afghanistan, I, I anticipated that it would be pretty similar to Iraq. Um, Iraq in, in the area that I was at in Iraq was was uh, desert type environment, um, and not much grass. Uh, there, if there was a little stream or two, obviously you'd see some some greenery around that. But it was pretty desolate, pretty barren land, um, and, and pretty flat. Um, when I got to Afghanistan, it, it wasn't what I anticipated as far as the uh, the uh, terrain would be it was it was rocky uh, still barren uh, not a lot of greenery <coughs> excuse me but uh, uh, hilly and and uh, just uh, a more mountainous uh, country by far a, a lot of a lot of mountains and hills and um, you know the the geographic locations I, w I was in you know, may have determined that but uh, I know that northern Iraq gets a little mountainous, but where I was at it, it, it wasn't. So heat, um, pretty much the same. It was it was still hot. <laughs> so looking back on troops going to Iraq and Afghanistan, a lot of people have said it's not typical because they go there, then they come home for a little while, then they go back, and they will do several tours of duty, and it's not it's not like the other wars. It's not like Vietnam. It's not like World War II. Would you agree with people? Is it difficult to come home, spend a little time, and then get the notice that you've got to go back? Yeah, um, you know, and, and to never have experienced it the other way, I, I, you know, it, it, it's hard to make a comparison. Um, I know that uh, when, when I was, uh, was notified that I was going to uh, deploy again, and this time to Afghanistan, um, you know, uh, the, my first thought was, "Oh no, I, I don't, I don't want to do this again." Uh, originally, I was told I was going to go back to Iraq, uh, and and it almost had this deja vu feeling. It was just, man, I've been there. I, I, I know what what it what it's like. I know how the days drag on sometimes. Um, uh, 
when I found when when I found out that hey, you're not going to go to Iraq now. You you're going to go to Afghanistan. Um, as as silly as it sounds, there's a little bit of a relief. I'm like, well, good. I'm going to someplace new. Um, but it, it it doesn't take very long. About two weeks, and and the newness you know was worn off. And it's it's uh, all right. You know, I've got a I've got a year to get this done. And uh, you know it. it uh, you, you spend more time uh, worried uh, about your family and, and, and things back home and, uh, you know, or at least me being married with children. Um, that's, that's one of the things that, that is by far the hardest. It, it's not the job you're doing there, um, you know, and, and you get in, into some, some tough situations and some things that, that obviously are, are not great situations, but, uh, you know, you're trained, you've got the gear, um, you know, you do that and, and you know, you can control that uh, to the best of your ability. Um, but you, you can't control, you know, making sure that your wife's okay and your kids are doing okay or when, when they're sick or things are going going bad here, you, you, you can't step in and, and help. And, and so, uh, you know, you really rely on your family and friends. But that's, uh, you know, to me is, is, is the most difficult part of it uh, and, uh, you know, the, the 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 look on my kids' faces and stuff when 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 you're leaving and, and you know they, they've been through it twice now so so they they kind of know what's going on if if I if I get deployed again so it's interesting to be talking to you at this moment because a lot of the troops have come home at this time a lot of them have pulled out when you heard news about that what kind of went through your head uh, you know it's it's great for them for them to come home. Um, you know, it, it's any any time you're you're deployed and, and you know whether it's a six month deployment or a year long deployment. Um, you know that separation from your family and, and from your friends and and you kind of have a a, a, a family a, a, and friend circle of, of soldiers when you're there. Um, but uh, you know it it's it's great to come come back home and, and you know you have a little bit of transition time uh, you know you, you kind of think hey I'm coming back and it's going to be just great just how it was when I left but you know roles have changed and you kind of you kind of got to walk a, a fine line and, and uh, you know you weren't the one that were that was making the rules or making the decisions for a year so um, it, it, it's it's great that they're coming that they're all coming back um, you know, or, or the soldiers that have come back. Um, you know, every every soldier that, that comes back is is you know another success as as far as I'm concerned. And um, you know, you, you you keep in 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 your mind and your your prayers for those soldiers that, that didn't come back. Um, you know, because that's uh, that's tough and that that gets emotional. Um, you know, if if you've lost friends or or some of your soldiers over there. Uh, that that piece always kind of weighs in when when you hear soldiers are coming home or, or you've got you know a, a units returning. Um, it, it's a great it's great news, um, and I, I kind of always take a minute and think about those that that haven't come back.